This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. It's external things being internalized that eventually gets into your heart and it begins to weigh you down. But you cannot deal with depression if you don't deal with the way you think. And you cannot deal with the way you think if you don't deal with your exposing yourself to. So this is what I'm saying. Expose yourself to the Word because it's going to produce amazing thought life. And the thought life is going to produce great feelings. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust him and believe him that there's a will of God for your life, there's something I'm supposed to do, and I will not miss it this year. Register now by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. Now, this whole deal is about emotions and the fact that you are in charge of your emotions. Say out loud, I am in charge of my emotions. Turn your neighbor and say, you are accountable for how you feel. Now, and when I grew up in the church, no, nobody told me I was accountable for how I feel. In fact, when the feelings came, I thought I just had to flow with it. I, I, I can remember saying, I can't help, I feel like this. And that is the biggest deception. That is what Satan wants you to think. He wants you to deceive you to, to the point where you experience these negative emotions and you think there's nothing I can do about it. And so we've defined emotions as feelings on the inside caused by pain or pleasure uh, to move you in a direction. Now, we're not teaching you to become emotionless. God gave you emotions, but unfortunately, sometimes those negative emotions have you. And he wants you to have emotions and not allow those emotions to have you. So what happens, there are godly emotions that can move you closer to the will of God for your life. And then there are negative emotions that are designed to move you away from the will of God for your life. You've got to be a person who understands that self-control is a gift from God. Somebody says, is self-control in the Bible? Yeah, it's under the heading of meekness. Uh, self-control is a gift from God that will lead you in the path and to the destiny of the design purpose for your life. But when you're out of control and you don't know how to control how you feel, somebody uh, sent a question this week that says, well, what about ang anger? Jesus got angry. We're not teaching that you're not going to experience negative emotions. We're trying to show you how to harness those negative emotions when they show up. We're trying to show you how to how to take authority over those negative emotions when they show up. We're not saying that you won't have negative emotions. In, in fact, I'm telling you, you are going to have some negative emotions. The problem has been when those negative emotions show up, they control you instead of you controlling it. The problem is, is when the anger shows up, you allow it to move you to the next level of destruction for your life instead of you taking authority over the, over the anger and saying, no, I'll not move you. Jesus didn't allow the anger to cause him to miss the cross. He turned a couple of tables over, but it didn't cause him to, to miss the cross. And so I'm trying to show you as Christian people, you know, don't, don't take this too far to the right, too far. Find the middle road on this. Yes, you're going to have godly emotions. You're going to have some negative emotions. But he wants you to know that you can be in charge of your emotions. If they're negative, they don't have to control your life. So what's happened in the lives of most people? They experience a situation, triggers a negative emotion, and they allow the negative emotions to take them away from the will of God and put them in a place they don't want to be because all their lives they've been trained, you can't help how you feel. 
you can't control your emotions. And you've seen in the Word of God, hopefully over this last month, oh, yes, I can. And you would, you, you, you're going to find out a little later on in your life that, man, this, this really does make a big difference. You, you, you work on this, you meditate on this, you saturate yourself in these teachings and sermons. You'll find that certain people that used to do things to you five months ago, it don't even move you no more because it's like, well, I am controlling my emotions. You, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get upset. And if you do get upset, you like, I'm, I'm not going to stay upset. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this. And that's what I'm trying to show you. I, I'm not trying to teach these negative things won't happen. I'm just trying to teach you, you now know how to respond and, and to those negative emotions that come. You know how to go after them instead of allowing them to destroy your life. Amen? So emotions, feelings on the inside designed to move you, uh, caused by pain or pleasure to move you in a direction, and we know the direction away from the will of God if they are negative. Godly emotions go towards the will of God uh, if they're godly. And so what happens is now uh, we have taken authority of those emotions and now we're dealing with the emotion of depression. So now how, how, how have we defined depression? Depression, their feelings um, that are caused by thoughts that weigh heavily upon your heart. In fact, I think one of our lessons, we, we went over the, some things, feelings that come from thinking thoughts that weigh, weigh you down. Feelings that come from thinking thoughts that weigh you down. I'd like to ask the question before we begin, what are you thinking about? Are you, have you been carrying thoughts all day long that are weighing you down? You know that. I may not know that. You may have come in here this morning or today with thoughts that weigh you down. So how long are you going to allow those thoughts to continue working on weighing you down? You can't change how you feel because those thoughts that are weighing you down are responsible for those feelings of depression. Depression, it's a way of thinking, thoughts that weigh you down and eventually gets into your heart. And so you, you have authority over that. Most people say, well, I can't help, I'm depressed. And because they don't know how to handle depression, they seek out the help of a therapist, they seek out the help of a doctor, and in some cases they seek out the help of medications because they don't know how to handle it. And, and I'm not against those things. I used to be a therapist. I'm not against those things, uh, if, if, but, but I have to warn you, there's a difference in learning how to manage depression and being free from it. And Jesus has already redeemed you from depression. And if you can learn how to tap into what he's already done, you don't have to go and pay money to learn how to manage it, okay? And so it's important that you understand, understand the difference here. And the way you deal with your feelings, depression is a feeling, and it's painful, and it hurts. I shared with you my testimony last week. It's painful, it, it's hurt, hurtful. Um, and if it's chronic, it, I mean, it, it, it feels painful. And one of the things you, I want you to understand, and I wanted you to understand that my journey, so that you, you know, I didn't want you thinking you just listen to some guy who don't know who's talking about and read some book and came out here and tried to be therapeutic with you. No, this is what I've gone through and come out of, and I know it's possible, but the key is you're going to have to expose yourself to the Word of God. See, that's the difference. You, we have something that the unsaved world doesn't have, the Word of God, and our faith in the Word of God. And when you expose yourself to the Word of God, and watch this, and you become saturated with that Word, there's something that happens in your life because you've saturated your thinking. If you want to change how you feel, you change how you think. You want to deal with how you feel, you got to deal with how you think. You want to deal with how you think, you got to deal with what's it, what, what you're exposing yourself to. You see, you're saturated with something. I don't know what it is. So I'm saying you might as well be saturated with the Word. I was spending some time in my closing Bible study last night while I like to go to bed with a scripture on my mind. And I was looking at the book of Luke 17 when it talks about the kingdom of God is within a man. And I'm working on really breaking that down because there's a lot of things that need to be understood about that. And one of the things I realized is that, wait a minute, when, how many of you have ever experienced um, not enough, you know, not enough pay your bills, not enough do this. And, and somebody says, are you kidding? Everybody in here has. All right, so 
So on the outside, the circumstance is not enough. But in the kingdom, it's plenty. In the kingdom, it's plenty. So here's the deal. If when you see not enough on the outside, but your conscious mind is, is focused on the plenty that you have in the kingdom, then eventually the lack on the outside is going to be dominated with a saturated conscience on the plenty that's in the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? So as goes your thinking, so goes your feeling. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh, so is he in his heart. I, I've said it a whole bunch of times, but i got to say it again. What are you spending the most time thinking about? That's what you're going to be feeling. As, oh, as, as goes your soul, so goes your life. As goes your thinking, so goes your life. If your thinking is saturated with that thing you've been exposed to, which is negative, and the negative exposure produces negative thinking, and then these are feelings, these are thoughts that are just remaining, and you're saturating yourself in that thing over and over and over again, then on the inside, your consciousness is saturated with the negative thinking, it's going to produce, it's going to produce bad depression. How do you deal with it? You change what you're exposing yourself to. I'm not going to expose myself to the thing that produces that negative thought. And then once you change that, you're going to change the way you think. And once you change the way you think, you're going to change the way you feel. Then you're going to change the decisions you make, the actions you take, the habits you create. You're going to change your character, and then you ultimately change your destination because you know where to go and what to attack when you feel depressed. It's external things being internalized that eventually gets into your heart and it begins to weigh you down. But you cannot deal with depression if you don't deal with the way you think. And you cannot deal with the way you think if you don't deal with what you're exposing yourself to. So this is what I'm saying. Expose yourself to the Word because it's going to produce amazing thought life. And the thought life is going to produce great feelings. You're going to feel good even in the midst of a bad situation because you've chosen to saturate your thinking with the Word of God. What does the Bible say? Meditate in the Word. That's saturation in it. Day and night or all the time. And he says when you do that, you will watch this. Make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. Another version says you'll deal wisely in the affairs of this world. So while they're trying to figure life out, you're taking authority and mastering life so that life won't ever master you. If y'all understand what I just said, say amen. amen. All right, so let's get started here. In uh, Mark 14, verse 33, in the Amplified, let's read it in the Amplified, guys, because I want people to see when the Bible says that Jesus was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, I want you to see that here's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, He's getting ready to take on the sins of every human that's ever born. He's going to go to hell and die for all of mankind. He's going to be crucified on a cross, dead and buried. He's going to be whipped with a cat of nine tails. Body going to be beat to so bad it's going to look like raw hamburger meat. He's have, his, his form is not even going to look like a man when they're finished. And these thoughts came by. He knew what happened. He knew what was going to happen. And look what he says here in this situation, verse 33. And he took him, Peter, and James, and John, and began to be struck with terror and amazement and deeply troubled and what? Depressed. Depressed. So he, he knows about it. And then he says, and he said to them, my soul, the soul, that's where your emotions are, my soul is exceedingly sad, overwhelmed with grief, so that it almost kills me. Remain here and keep awake and be watching. But then he tells us a little advice. What do you do if you ever face this? And, and we're going to talk about this either this weekend or next week. He said, go, keep going a little farther. In other words, don't stop going towards the destiny that has been revealed to you. If you know what you're doing is the right thing, keep going a little farther. Feeling bad, but you know this is the right thing, so do it. I'll tell you a perfect illustration. 
maybe feeling bad and not coming to Bible study, but you go a little farther. You go a little farther. Well, I don't feel like it, but you go a little farther. You don't allow your emotions to govern your life. You take authority over those things, and Jesus said, go farther and do the thing you know to do. Do the thing you know to do. I think I shared that in my testimony, that when I was going through that thing and I asked my wife to help me, she says the only thing, and, and she don't, we, don't, we didn't realize until now that that was a godly advice. Only thing I can tell you is keep doing what you know to do. I had no idea that was, that was what Jesus advised. Just keep doing it, even though you feel that way, keep doing what you know to do. I don't know about you, have you ever entered into a prayer and you didn't feel good? Or you didn't feel like praying? That's just not what you wanted to do? And how many of you just, just made yourself do it and you felt better? Amen. You know, I don't feel like reading this scripture, I don't feel like sitting here looking at this word for the day, but you keep doing what you know and you, 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 your feelings change because you've attacked those thoughts and you've exposed yourself to something that's awesome. And that's why I said, go a little farther, and he said, keep praying. Go a little farther and keep praying. Well, the world doesn't want to receive that advice. And so, when you neglect God's advice, then you go and try to find, um, uh, um, what do you call something that's fake? You're trying to imitate, an imitation. Yeah. You try to go and see another way to do it. Now, I'm not against you going another way to do it, but I'm just saying our way is the best way and people don't know that, and some Christians don't know that because they won't do it. And I'm telling you, as a person who's gone through it and will do it, you'll see some amazing things happen. Now, uh, we left off with uh, talking about the effects of depression. And one of the statements I made was that depression is an enemy to your success. Depression is an enemy to your success. Depression wants to steal your ambition, and it wants to prevent you from participating in the activities that uh, you should be enjoying in your life. It's an enemy to your happiness and it is an enemy to your success. There is no way I want you to allow this enemy to stop you from being happy and successful. And it should motivate you to know that when the depression tries to attack your life, it should say to you, all you trying to do is stop me from being successful. And how? Because when the feeling comes, it wants to move you away from the will of God for your life. It wants to move you away from the plan of God for your life. And how often do you find yourself just kind of wondering how long is it going to take and when is it going to be my time? Listen, honey, it's hard to, to talk to the God of love and peace when you're always in a dark place. <laughs> and he just needs you to recognize that. So, uh, we talked about some effects of depression. Number one, physical illness is one effect of depression. Physical illness is one effect. You continue to allow those thoughts to press in and they eventually settle and into your heart and you don't deal with those thoughts and then those feelings come and man, it'll release terrible things in your body. Your cortisol level begins to rise up. It begins to put a foundation for a chronic disease because if you're emotionally diseased, you will eventually become physically diseased. And uh, while people try to diagnose folks and the different illnesses, one of the things that I think we miss is the fact that a lot of things come from being so stressed and depressed that if you don't deal with that, then you can try to take a lot of supplements and do healthy things, but you have got to deal with that emotional area. And it, your emotional area can bring you to a place of, 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 of death. You can go through a, a trauma or a shocking trauma situation, and it could release cancer to be manifested in your body. We all have cancer cells, but they are kept at bay. And just some emotional thing like that can, can be responsible for it being released in your body. I can't tell you the illnesses that are up uh, that can come up as a result of you not dealing with depression. And so, for people who like to worry a lot, stop. You're making yourself sick. For people who just want to be depressed about everything and want to magnify differences, uh, difficulties in your life, stop. You're making yourself sick. If you go to bed sad and you wake up sad and you sad throughout the day, you're making yourself sick. And so what happens is when the sickness comes, you say, well, who did it? it it's a devil. No, it's an uninformed Christian who didn't know how to deal with his emotions. Wow. How about that? 
that that feels crazy coming to the church and you're not hearing, well, it's the devil that did it. No, it's an uninformed Christian who don't have no idea how to handle their emotions. And their emotions have been handling you, and you go around with pain, you got this stuff that's happening. You wouldn't, listen, you show me a real sick person, and I guarantee you, I go back in the background, if they're honest with me, if they're honest with me, they will tell me how long they've been worried and concerned and all of that stuff that's going on right there. It is. It is. I found out my, my emotional uh, openness, I'm trying to fight it by faith, and I had it going until the trauma uh, and, and the shock of betrayal hit me, and it, 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 it affected my physical body. And while I look strong coming on the pulpit like it didn't matter and stuff, that's all my faith part. But the, the, the trauma of it and having to deal with that, whew, it, was, it was the devil. He was trying to kill me that. That one day, there's so many things that happened that one day that was so painful, so hurtful, including the death of loved ones. It was just crazy. And the enemy knew if I, can, if I can cause enough stress and trauma, I can release something and be closer to taking you out. But just like that drama can take you out, the joy of the Lord can produce healing. Amen. See, you got to know the word that will bring joy. Amen. For everything the devil think he got against you, God has already risen more. You know, the Bible talks about much more. You know, sin, when sin abounds, he said grace does what? Much more abounds. So ain't nothing that's going to happen to you that's not, that's not already handled. Amen. Turn two people and tell them, it's handled, it's handled, it's handled. I don't, I don't care what it is, it's handled. It's handled. And that keeps, you, that keeps you safe in your mind that no matter how crazy it might be, remind yourself, saturate your consciousness that this is handled and there's an expiration to all trouble. Go to bed, say, that thing might expire tomorrow. If it don't, wake up, live by faith through that day, go to bed again. But it can't be there all the time. Right. Hallelujah. Just use it like you would dumbbells and just exercise to build your muscle up. Yes. While the trouble is there, you might as well benefit from it being there. Amen. Glory be to God. I almost got happy on it. You might as well benefit from it being there. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, Get something out of it. Don't ever come out of a hard time the same. Amen. Come out of a hard time with some wisdom yeah. that you know something now. Yeah. Bring it on, devil. And then one day you're going to say, you want to dance? Bring it on. I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of you. No, I ain't never going to be scared of you. Come on over here. <laughs> you got to get that aggressive with the enemy. First of all, you've got to know how's he behind it. He's behind it. He doesn't have authority to do it. He wants to use suggestions and trickery so you can authorize it. Sad thing is that you've allowed Satan's suggestions or your ignorance to authorize your own destruction. You hear what I said? Satan's suggestion or your ignorance to authorize your own destruction. You open your mouth up and speak things in the air. You start agreeing with stuff. Your emotions start taking you places. You're not in the Word and exposing yourself to the Word. See, all of that stuff is authorized by you. And so you got to use your authority in the right way to benefit you so that you don't allow yourself to authorize something to happen in your life that's going to hurt you. I used to pray a prayer. It went like this, Lord, uh, please help me not to hurt myself. Please help me not to do something, say something, or misunderstand something that'll hurt myself. Because, you know, I, I recognize where it was coming from, but I needed, I needed some revelation on how to deal with it. In a world full of uncertainty and in the midst of unprecedented global events, the pressures of life can be overwhelming and lead to internal depression. But Christ has called us to overcome and win our internal and external battles. That's why we have designed a series just for you. You don't have to choose depression. You can choose your authority over depression and use your faith to defeat it and keep it out of your life. When you know how to properly divide the word, you know how to properly use the word. During these challenging times, boost your faith and fight the good fight against depression, anxiety, and fear with the five message series delivered from depression for just $30. Also available in this one-time offer 
is the Delivered from Depression series bundled with the powerful classic book, Winning in Troubled Times. Receive this $50 power pack for just $40 US dollars. Call today or visit the website on the screen to order. Creflo and Taffy Dollar would like to wish you and yours the best Christmas ever. And here to help you celebrate is Arrow Records Christmas in the City Part 2 CD. Break out the traditional Christmas favorites like Jingle Bells and Joy to the World by World Changer's very own worship leader, Jonathan Phillips. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs hear blow. Christmas in the City will carry you through the holiday parties, the family gatherings, and when you just need some downtime this holiday season. Fill every day of Christmas with songs from favorite artists like Canton Jones and more. Get busy decorating, shopping, and cooking to the tunes of Christmas in the City Part 2. Bring it home now for the holiday price of $10. Call or go online now for Christmas in the City Part 2. Everything in God's kingdom works by faith. Now, I remember when Taffy and I started giving. It was a painful thing to give because we didn't have much at all financially. However, we made a decision to be givers. And one of the most quoted scriptures in the Bible is John 3:16. God so loved the world that he gave. Therefore, as Christians, we give. Our giving is an expression of our love. And when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world. And in addition to helping millions who are hurting and have vital physical needs, pray about what God would have you to show at this time. And we want to thank you in advance for your support. To support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. I pray that you were blessed by the word of God today. And remember that we know that this is a different time. This is a different season. This season, which is a holiday time, but yet we are in a pandemic. But you know what? God is still good and our emotions do not rule and dominate our lives. Thank God for the positive emotions, but you know what? You have to arrest and uh, eliminate and eradicate the negative ones. So be encouraged today, make some great memories, start a new tradition, and know that God is good. Happy holidays. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends, 